from a troubled uh, background, very troubled background, and he took her in as one of his own. <clears throat> and as she had some problems, what parents would call problems anyway, later on, and Dennis told me, he said, he, he knows everything will be okay in the end because God has a special plan for children like that that have suffered through the abuse that she suffered through. And uh, she, uh, last time he talked about her, she was living in Portland and had an Obama poster on her wall. So he, <laughs> uh, he, he, he talked about, we talked about, uh, he was about my age and we talked about people our age and what we would do as young men. And he talked about one of his Vietnam experiences where they got a desperate call from an army outfit that was pinned down and needed ammunition in the jungle. And he volunteered to fly out with the ammunition and to take bodies out of there. And he got to the area and he couldn't see down. He had his doorman uh, crew chief leaning out of the door telling him, directing him down through trees. And it was on a steep hillside and he could only put one of his skids down. And the plane was in balance. And as they were throwing ammunition off, the, the aircraft would try to jump up. They were throwing bodies on. It was still trying to go down. But he was able to resupply that unit and successfully remove some of their uh, dead members and get them back. Uh, and he, but he said, you know, as a young man, you would do that. If you were older, you would go like, yeah, I don't think I can do that tonight. And uh, it just was talked about his commitment. He had hoped to, at that time, living on adrenaline, had hoped to, to transfer pretty much from the Army to whatever the CIA Air Force was at the time. And he uh, said, he thought he could just go from one door to the next, take off his uniform and start flying. And they said, no, you got to go back to the States first, and then we'll call you, and then we'll hire you. And he got back to the States and met Kathy. And he'd come, he would had some, uh, his father, he said, wasn't real involved in the church. Kathy was, and he said, Kathy, they got together, and Kathy uh, brought him back to God and to his religion. And he decided he wouldn't go in the CIA, and he would do the other things he, he is, he's done throughout his life. He was an honorable, uh, honorary citizen of Fuzhou, China. Fuzhou, China. Uh, I spent time with him on a Chinese trip, and I watched him one night very discreetly hand money to somebody with crippled children. He didn't, you know, he tried to do it so that nobody would see him do that. That's the kind of person he was. And um, I worked with him. We tried to come up. I was the only Democrat on a group. We we tried to come up with a non-political solution for redistricting. And uh, he and I had many conversations about that, how we could do that. And he said, now it might be a good time to try it because if it doesn't get settled and the Secretary of State gets the redistrict, I'm the Secretary of State and the Democrats ought to be ready to move without having me do that. So we, we worked on that. We didn't uh, get a, the resolution we were hoping for. Representative Barker, I regret that I have to interrupt okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Barker.